So let's have this conversation now. Uh, taking us back to the day when uh, Chief Justice uh, David Moraga uh, called the media and he addressed the media from the steps of uh, the offices of the Supreme Court of Kenya, his office. And he came and his message was very clear and direct. We have a government that has on several occasions shown direct contempt of the judiciary by first of all disobeying court orders and also going to a point where the executive is uh, stalling on the judiciary's reform progress and reform agenda. When the Judicial Service Commission sits and uh, advertises positions of uh, Court of Appeal judges, people apply for those positions. The Judicial Service Commission goes through an entire process of interviewing, vetting, and even going to a point of nominating suitable candidates and saying, Mr. President, as the law requires, here are names of uh, individuals who've gone through the due process and we'd like you to appoint them to become judges. And the president goes quiet. And then this matter is brought, even it goes up to the court and the courts determine the matter and they say, no, the president ought to make this appointment. And still the president goes quiet. Chief Justice David Maraga just came out basically guns blazing the other day and said, come on, Mr. President, mm -hmm. we expect that at least, the very least, you shall obey court orders. And even the very least, you shall grant us that uh, kind of decorum. We are an equal arm of government as the judiciary. Mm -hmm. We are equal to the other two arms of government, the executive and the legislature. Please treat us with that decorum. It brought so many conversations, right? And we even had it, uh, we discussed it here for like two days. The Law Society of Kenya itself has said, no, 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 no. We fought the president as well. We stand with the chief justice. We see what the chief justice is saying. There are those who have said, yeah, 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 yeah. The chief justice may be raising some issues, but what exactly has he done? Mm -hmm. The attorney general's response to this particular issue was saying, but you have failed the judiciary. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chief Justice, you have failed the this judiciary. This is at you, your feet. Yeah. yeah. And now this is where we now we get into the, in, into the context of things. This is not the first time that the judiciary and the executive are having a clash, especially under the 2010 constitution. Among the things that the 2010 constitution ensured is to try and give judiciary more independence, have a judicial service commission that is uh, more transparent in how it comes into office, have a judicial service commission that shall uh, appear more transparent in how it conducts its uh, business. And also, even in, from the recruitment of judges, to the recruitment of the Chief Justice of the Republic. Hmm. Let's speak to a man who has good experience in this. And this man was the first Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya and President of the Supreme Court and Chairman of the Judicial Service Commission under the 2010 Constitution, Dr. Willie Mutunga. Dr. Willie, good morning. Morning, morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. Welcome to the Situation Room. Right. Thanks. So, Willie, uh, first of all, before we even get into the, the topic of the day, it's, uh, it's been a while. We see, yes, you're active uh, on other forums. We see you're active on social media. How, how are you spending your retirement, Willie? Um, um, a lot of writing. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, you know, uh, thinking. Um, reading. Um, I, I work from home. I'm, mm. In any case, <laughs> this, is, this is not new because even as Chief Justice, uh, when I wasn't sitting, I would just come home and mm. and work and work from here. Mm. Yeah. So lockdown for me started in 2016. So you've been on lockdown for this is nothing new for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's not. It's 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 not new and. There's an opportunity to do a lot of stuff, you know, mm. yoga, meditation, mm. you know, cooking. And uh, I did, there, there were so many books I hadn't read, and now I've managed to read them. So you become a book. Uh, <laughs> I, I always was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that among the things that you're writing is a memoir. Yeah, that's that 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 was finished actually in 2018. But uh, you know, pub publishers are pretty uh, difficult to get. You know, you give them that story, they say, "Oh, this is a Kenyan story," and so forth. But there are two who are keen on publishing it. So uh, I hope by probably by the end of the year it will be out. Um, and I'm writing currently writing another 
another book, which is more of a legal text mm-hmm. about jurisprudence, constitutionalism, um, looking at uh, the judicial politics, which judges always say that they don't, they are not involved in politics when uh, that is a confirmation that they are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and also what is called the extrajudicial uh, work. You mm. know, judges used to say that they stick through their judgments, yep. which, which is another falsehood because mm. when, when you called, uh, like you are calling me now, mm. to, uh, you know, the discussion uh, gives me a chance to talk about something that is... Uh, uh, the topic raised by other people, yeah, and uh, you, you, you know, so uh, under the new constitution, what is called public participation, where transparency and accountability is something new mm. that judges have to, you know, to kind of think about and 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 realize this is important uh, when you are given a chance to uh, to, to to talk. You just I see it. You, you know, I know there are some judges who will go to church and they will be asked, uh, can you tell us about this and that? And they disappear before uh, <laughs> the church service is over. Yeah, right. yeah but, uh, you, you know, internalizing the trend constitution mm-hmm. is, is, is a problem mm. uh, that is faced not only by the executive parliament and the judiciary itself, mm. But also the citizens. Yeah, yeah. In the citizens, I listened in uh, uh, when you talked to uh, uh, Kiama, mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, because I thought you guys were actually auditing the civil society rather than the government. But that is something you want to discuss mm. uh, right. with them. But I, I, I was, I told Brian that I was very happy you pushed one thing, mm. and that was. What is to be done? Yeah. You know what? You know you kept on asking them that question. I don't think they they answered it actually. Mm. No. Uh, uh, but but it was a great question to basically uh, keep people uh, saying exactly what they want to do. Yeah. Under the constitution, even if you want to say you are uh, you you are preparing a con- you know a, a revolution, you can say so. Yep. There's no problem. <laughs> yeah. You can say you can say whatever you wish to say. Yeah, I, I mean, once they know that you want to overthrow them, then they will, they will deal with you. Mm. But there is a revolution of ideas. Yeah, yeah. Where, where people uh, talk about it and they, uh, they talk about COVID nineteen and the opportunities that uh, are around to speak about the right to food. Uh, housing, you know, uh, education, the health itself. Yeah. You know, those those are discussions that uh, have been very, 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 very useful. And uh, you know, freedom of expression, of course, is very, is very, 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 very important. But people tend to to feel like uh, you know they they are under attack when they are asked exactly, uh, you know, what you are doing. What happened to that guy is very uh, unfortunate, but we all know that the police has been colonial mm. for a long time. What they did to Kiama is what they did to me in 1982. It's not dif- different. You Same get picked, thing, generations you apart. Know, yeah, and uh, they tell your wife, we are taking you to Central Police Station, mm. and and you end up in a Bakasi, you know, uh, and th- th- there is that trajectory, you yeah. know. David D was picked from Mombasa and driven to Nairobi. Yep. Can you imagine if the guys stop in the voyage they did in the forest? So My goodness. What, what, yeah, it's very, very, uh, you know, frightening. And I think the, the, the constitution is very, very clear. The mm. police could have come to the police station. Mm. Uh, you know, we have we have questions that he would you would you get a lawyer or go by himself or whoever and uh, it will be a conversation according to uh, the law yeah 
and 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 they can take statements and so forth yeah. and they prepare the file you know this idea of picking people on friday or whatever and you haven't done investigations then you go to court and say we uh, require we more time to... <laughs> yeah why didn't you you know why not investigate mm. uh, let the dpp also give an opinion mm whether this is a matter that should be prosecuted or not yeah. all right yeah and the person you, you, you know uh, uh writes a statement it's, it's it's very very frightening when uh, somebody comes and actually knocks down your door and uh, handcuffs you uh, luckily is. i think this this guy doesn't even have a girlfriend, so there are no witnesses there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fortunately, he had his uh, Facebook Live, mm. which uh, oh, has, okay. has, information has that making all of up. us the witnesses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because because like the kids who watch that, I remember my kids. Uh, like my son has never recovered uh, from that trauma of mm. seeing of seeing uh, you being picked come, up. You know, and, yeah, and the, the whole place being uh, the house being turned upside down. Yeah, by these guys who are armed and whatnot. The police, in my view, has to be completely humanized. You know, and I have very uh, great sympathy with the co-plotters in eighty two when they said the whole lot of them should go home. Mm. And, and and you you, you know you start afresh. It's yeah. uh, it's it's something that the, uh, we we we've got we've got to hold them accountable. Article two that is of the constitution is very clear. Mm. So uh, so I I I, I hope anyway we'll get there. You, you, know, you guys will continue. The we will discussion. continue pushing this conversation. Actually, now yeah. that you've talked about um, you know, the kind of uh, stuff that Kiama went through and others and even yourself, yeah. it brings us yeah. now to the judiciary, which is where yeah. we, we hope to go and get reprieve when we feel yeah. that we've been, our rights have been trampled on by the executive or even by the legislature yeah. or even by fellow, fellow Kenyans. Now, looking yeah. at the state of the judiciary so far, from uh, mm -hmm. when the constitution of Kenya was being drafted, it was looking yeah. at uh, making the judiciary a stronger um, and more independent arm of government. You served right. in the first judiciary of this constitution. You have been yeah. there, of course, looking and observing and how the judiciary has been operating. Do you yeah. feel that the judiciary has taken steps towards getting that independence where we can actually look at it and see this is our protector? Yeah, uh, I mean that's a, that's a, that's a great question. What what I'll tell you is that uh, I've always thought that the judiciary is at a crossroads after you know this constitution was passed, mm. and the question is whether the judiciary uh, becomes an appendage of the uh, of the executive mm -hmm. and, and the parliament and the other you know economic forces that uh, keep it dependent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people forget that uh, it's not just uh, the executive parliament, uh, corporate interests, civil society interests uh, that affect the independence of the judiciary. Uh, my experience is that um, the ethnic communities where judges come from affect their independence seriously. Are you you know, they are, yes, yes. Uh, in my case, mm -hmm. in my case, um, my independence was tested, uh, uh, tested by the Kamba community. Mm -hmm. You know, this notion that uh, this is a is uh, yeah, this is an ethnic office. Mm -hmm. So, so self-appointed people, pastors, and other people who come and tell me. Why are you building courts in Gariza, not uh, Makweni? Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, you know uh, why? Why? Why is the Ketui court not being uh, modernized? Mm -hmm. You 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 you're just reconstructing it and so forth. And uh, I I talked to them, I respected them, and after a while, I thought this this was was not going anywhere. So I told <laughs> them, uh, you know what. Uh, the people of North Frontier District have been marginalized for a long time. They also need courts. So we're going to have 
uh, courts in Garissa, in, uh, you know, Isiolo, Marasabit, uh, Lodwa, uh, because I, I, that was supported by Kibaki. Mm. So, I, so I, I told them this is what uh, the government pre- wants. The president wants mm. uh, so, so, so that there is some kind of demarginalization. So you deflected and, the attention from you and said this is... The- yeah, yeah. And they, they told me, okay, you know, it's up to you. When you get into trouble, don't come to us. I said, obviously, <laughs> I will not come to you. I will go to people who have given court. Yes. They will defend me. Yes. So, so the, that one, and even, the, you know, the spouses, the the children, the relatives, and so forth, you can be compromised in a, a lot of ways. So so it's the judiciary is at the crossroads and you know, it has to decide whether it's going to support the citizen, become a temple of justice, you know, for uh, f- to protect, you know, people's rights under the Constitution. I get very upset when uh, magistrates are asking people, poor people, to pay bails of, of uh, 5000 knowing they can't afford it. Yeah. You know, when the Constitution basically asks a simple question, will this person, ask, you know, attend trial? Mm-hmm. You, you can even call the chief from from his village and uh, tell the chief, make sure that this guy attends court. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and this hundred million, I don't know what, even if the billionaires can pay, uh, I, I think it's... Uh, it's it, it's very, very difficult to see how they are not uh, uh, implementing what we call the bail bond, uh, you know, uh, manual that, that 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 we came up with. But Do- anyway, that Doctor Mutunga, that's I wanted to ask you a question. Yes. Uh, in your time as Chief Justice, what would you consider to have been your greatest challenge? Uh I really, uh, <laughs> the, 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 you know, the, the, the greatest challenge really is, 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 is dealing with the political leadership. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's the, the most uh, difficult thing to work at a progressive constitution. Mm. When the people you are working with, they don't want to implement it. So, some governor told me the other day, which is uh, which, which I think is a great metaphor. He said the constitution is a beautiful baby that the country has birthed, right? Mm-hmm. But we've taken it and given it to the bears of this world, who are child traffickers and uh, uh, and uh, they trade in body parts, children yeah. body parts. So how do you expect the child to ever? Uh, yeah. To be not you know, to grow. Well, yeah, so it's the politics, and I think the question that Brian was telling me that uh, we are going to discuss is about that. It's mm. about a, a situation where uh, the, the politics and the politicians are not uh, realizing that implementing the constitution is a national interest, mm-hmm. and uh, all arms of government <coughs> should you know, you should see that as a constant north where you work um, uh, in tandem, you know, seamlessly with one, uh, with, with one another. Willie, uh, so then c- can, I, can I interject and ask you then, if you, yes, see, yeah. if you see then as, you know, um, interference by the political class to have having been one of your greatest challenges at that point, then what is your perspective or what is currently happening in terms of the standoff between the judiciary and the executive now? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, let, let me say that uh, uh, I'm not going to respond to the CJ's position or the AG, mm-hmm. but I want to give you certain facts so that you can, you know, make up your mind about that standoff. Okay. Okay. Mm. Uh, and the, the, the first one is the one that you had mentioned uh, first about appointments, all right? Yeah. I, I want to say under the new constitution, uh, the appointments are very public. People apply, they are not appointed, 
they sub- subjected to public interviews yeah. and uh, by the Judicial Service Commission. And uh, the Judicial Service Commission gets reports from serious departments of the executive. The KRA, you know, has to confirm that uh, the candidate is tax compliant, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The DCI has to give you what is called Certificate of uh, Good Conduct, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the, uh, the Anti-Corruption Commission has to uh, file a report. Mm-hmm. A Higher Education Loans Board has also to, you know, to file, you know, to file a report. The uh, the judicial, judicial service commission itself. If you are being a judge mm-hmm. or a magistrate and you are asking for promotion, there is your file is full of stuff, complaints and so forth. Yep. That is scrutinized as well. Uh, Law Society of Kenya. If you are a practicing advocate, they will have to file a report to say whether you know you have complaints. Mm-hmm. Against you, all right. Yeah. So, so, so there is a lot of that. Not to mention that uh, members of public can come in and and basically say, "Oh, this guy don't appoint him. Uh, he has these issues and so forth." And of course, you ask the candidate to respond to, uh, you know, uh, these issues. Now, when that the judiciary then uh, the JSC says these are the people we are appointing, all right? The constitution is very, very, very clear. You know, the the president uh, has to swear them in, uh, except for the chief justice and deputy chief justice who, whose nominations he has to hand over to the to parliament for vetting. Yeah, because that uh, that's the uh, the constitution. But for ordinary judges, then that process is sufficient. And this is because the, the as I've said, the executive is represented in the recruitment. Yes. With yes. these reports coming from NIS, I should have said, NIS files reports. Uh, so, so, so uh, the, and the, the president is represented by the, the attorney, attorney general, general. Mm-hmm. the chair of the public service commission. Yes. Yeah. He, he appoints two people, a woman and a man, yeah. uh, to represent the public. But uh, that's theoretically that's what they are supposed to do. But they are actually they are appointees the, of the president. The, yes, mm-hmm. yes, and uh, so they are. You know, there are those ones, and the judicial service commission is balanced that way. You mm-hmm. know, the judiciary is represented, the executive is represented, the law society is represented, the public is, is represented. People can discuss whether that balance is 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 is, is actually apt. Yeah. You know, uh, if they want to amend the constitution, whether you want to have more, um, I mean, somebody from parliament, from the corporate sector, mm. so that you broaden the uh, the membership. But once once that is done. Uh, the president has to do it, and uh, if you remember, in 2015, uh, we had the same problem. You we understand the fears of the executive. Mm. Yes, yes, we appointed some judges, and uh, the president said, uh, in, in fact, that time he appointed some and didn't appoint others. Yeah. And uh, what we did in 2015 was, uh, uh, as a JSC, we sought for a meeting with the president to find out what his uh, problem was and he said that uh, he's not a rubber stamp <laughs> you know he has to be Convinced. Uh, involved yeah yeah and so but you were we, able to we, seek and find audience with the president were you not um i think one of the issues that we see here also is that uh, mm. um justice marga has not been able to get audience with the president so he's told us yeah you know th- this is why we're talking about uh, political because they are not constant. They mm. keep on changing. Mm. Uh, during, during my time as, uh, uh, as, as uh, Chief Justice, uh, I had very good relations uh, with uh, Kibaki and uh, Raila, you mm. know, yeah. for two yeah. years. Mm-hmm. In fact, Kibaki uh, funded the, the judiciary. You know, our budget moved from $3 billion to $17 billion. Yeah. And that's why we were able to build courts and so forth. Mm-hmm. He is committed to, to that. And 
so when uh, Ruto and Uhuru came in, we we we, we also had uh, you know uh, good relations. We had uh, the president used to chair something you know the the three arms yes. was an issue. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Muturi would come and I'll be there. Uh, particularly when we were in in in, uh, in the judiciary, yeah. uh, between the three arms, you know, when mm-hmm. uh, Shole was dismissed, and then they wanted to dismiss members of the Judicial Service Commission. I yeah. think you remember. Yes. And the case was in court, so we sat down and we said, uh, uh, we, you know, we have to talk. And the president chaired the meeting, and uh, so during my time. Uh, I had the president's cell phone because I uh, cell phone number because mm-hmm. the first time I met him I said I, I don't want to talk to you through proxies. Mm-hmm. I want her direct access. <laughs> yes, yeah, so give me your cell phone number, mm-hmm. which he did, right. and uh, and so I would call and he would call, mm-hmm. uh, and th- there was there was that dialogue and that dialogue is uh, is actually in the constitution. So basically, what what I'm hearing you saying, Willie, is that, um, like like you said, Mm -hmm. it's the politics side of things. You have to be able to play the political game as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, you 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 know, the you you have uh, to you know to play that game because Mm -hmm. sometimes uh, uh, the 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 president might not return your call. Mm Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> if 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 he doesn't return your call, you you know you go to Siaya where you are open a court and you 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 say something like uh, uh, this court you know this court will not be due if Parliament continues uh, denying funds. Yeah. Uh, politicians are always afraid of public opinion, so yeah. <laughs> you have to find out how. How to do it? How to but coming it. back, yeah, to 2015, mm. uh, which is which is something that is very important. We sat with President uh, Uhuru, and uh, he was listening, and uh, we said, you know, let's look for consensus. And he said, you know, I get information outside the the departments you are consulting. Mm-hmm. And he said, yes, of course, the president can get uh, uh, intel from. Yeah. FBI, CIA, Mossad, mm. and other, you know, even the Chinese about uh, people who are applying. Yeah. And so we said, yes, you have a point. Mm. Okay. Uh, you can give us that information when you have it, mm. right? Uh, so that the, the JSC considers it and is able to also ask questions of the candidates so mm. that it's what we call due process. Yeah. Because you cannot take that information as true unless you ask the candidate, is this true, what has happened, and so forth. And and we went on and said that uh, once the the short listing is done, the names will be sent to the president so that if he has any uh, information he wants to share with the Judicial Service Commission, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Judicial Service Commission will go into it and he was happy with that and that's how we settled that issue and the people were uh, you know were actually appointed let me interject here and see if i can if i'm yeah. getting this right so the agreement yeah. was before the mm. public nomination you'll have some right. uh, back channel communication with the president and say these are the people that we intend to nominate yes oh i see you 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 you, you, you give the names and you you, t- you tell the president we have already gotten reports from NIH, yeah. from everybody, mm. all right? Yes. But we are asking you specifically, so you know, to to be part of it if you have evidence yeah. or information, uh, so that we can process it. And if uh, um, I don't remember him giving any information uh, uh, after that. Uh, and but we we as a judicial service commission we religiously uh, made sure we kept the you know part of our part of our bargain yeah. and a lot of these things are just about uh, uh, you know discussions and uh, sometimes I think in fact the judiciary has its own uh, 
was to end me because mm. there are people there who, 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 you know, go and tell the politicians that the legal position is this. Yeah. You know, so because it's not an institution that is uh, united, it has its own divisions. And, and so that's the, the, you know, the constitutional uh, position. The constitution makes the president uh, a rubber stamp in the sense that he has to swear in people. Yeah. But he, he participates. Politically, you, you, know, need to, you need to find a way of involving the president. Yes, and the, and and I think that uh, uh, you know whatever happens, mm. uh, the the president, the, the chief justice, the speaker, they should they should, you know they should all know that their uh, the constitution says they derive their authority from the people. Yes, mm. you know that's what the constitution says, mm. right? So so you got to uh, uh, depersonalize. You know the issues, uh, the issues, and the, and the look at uh, uh, the, the the bigger the picture. Big, would, like, would, would, uh, would you say it's the same thing? Even when it when it comes, the same would apply when it comes to the other complaints that we've heard from the judiciary, like about funding. You have talked about how you worked with President Kibaki. He increased the funding from the judiciary from three to was it uh, seven billion? Seventeen, yeah. 17 billion. Yeah, seventeen. Seventeen. It was. Uh, it was. It was quite a. It was a huge. Uh, it was a jump. It was a considerable. It was jump. a jump, but, uh, and we, we, you know, we, we, uh, you know, we convinced him. Mm. The whole funding. But now, again, now we are now we are hearing from the judiciary that uh, the the funding is being reduced, and there's also yeah. a source of the conflict that we have between the judiciary and the executive. It, it it has to be, and the, you know this narrative that the executive and the parliament own resources yep. is, is is a very false, you know, narrative. This money belongs to the king and the people, mm. and the judiciary should be given uh, its percentage. Uh, actually, internationally, is two point five percent that the judiciaries are given. All right. Now, as we talk, the frustration of uh, C.J. Maraga is very clear to me because there are there are courts that are, are not completed. Yeah. Okay, and uh, they ought to be, you know, they ought to be uh, completed. There is this recruitment of judges. The, uh, the, uh, you know, there is what is called the judiciary uh, judiciary fund. Mm where the money ought to be, uh, you know, put in. That hasn't been completed uh, uh, yet. Mm -hmm. Because if you are building a court in a, you do it in a year, you, you, you need the money put in that fund so that you can go through the processes of procurement and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but what happens is that if you don't spend uh, the money within a year, it goes back to yeah. the... Uh, the, the, the treasury, and this is why I think the people have to understand mm. that uh, the executive and the parliament don't own those resources. Mm. This idea of selling one institution mm. that will starve you of resources because you, you know it's totally unconstitutional. How because can we is, how can we ring fence this to ensure that the money that goes to the judiciary? is not subject to manipulation by the other two arms of government because this is what clearly we are seeing is at play now that's 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 what we were pushing all the time we were basically saying let's adopt the international standards where you know exactly how much money is coming to the judiciary mm -hmm. you know from the budget all right yes just a, just a way uh the executive uh, uh, gets his own cut, you know, Parliament gets his own cut, the institutions that have been created, this under the Constitution has to be transparent. You know, it's not a matter of uh, 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 people saying that, uh, okay, uh, we'll punish you because you haven't done A, and a B, or C. You, you know, these this, the resources be, uh, belong to the people. And the people are the ones that have given the executive, parliament, and judiciary authority. Mm. So, so there ought to be a situation that is discussed that uh, completely uh, gets rid of this uh, narrative that uh, the judiciary can tell, you know, the executive 
okay, you have not given us money, we will not be uh, deciding in your favor or something <laughs> like that, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it's ridiculous under this, uh, you know, uh, 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 constitutions. And uh, the, 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 the leadership in this country, whether it's in the judiciary and whatever, they have to focus on what I call the national interest, yeah. where you move out of the so-called separation of powers, mm. you know. Talking uh, of national interest, uh, yeah. uh, Dr. Yeah. someone who held a similar position to the one you held in the U.S. still holds it, uh, John G. Roberts, Jr. Yeah. He is remembered for, among other things, upholding something mm. that it was assumed he wouldn't. He was a nominee of uh, George W. Bush, a Republican. Yes. And yes. it was therefore assumed he had Republican leanings, but he upheld something that the Republicans wanted to shoot down at every given opportunity, Obamacare. So yeah, yeah, he will yeah. be remembered for the greatest time about this. What would you say you can be best remembered for when you are Chief Justice? I, I, I don't, you, you know, uh, one thing I've always told people is that uh, when I was working in the judiciary, I didn't give a damn about legacy mm. and about how we be uh, remembered. remembered. Okay, because the the politics of division in this country, you you are always judged on the basis of uh, ethnic lens, mm -hmm. you know, uh, on the basis of so many things. Yeah. You, you can. I don't see any objectivity, right? Mm. So I don't talk about uh, uh, what my legacy is. I let people uh, uh, say what they want. Perhaps uh, we can ask. Twitter. We can ask it in a different way. What are you most what? proud of? Huh? What are you most proud of in your tenure as a Chief Justice? What am I not proud of? What are most, you most most proud of? Proud of. I, most proud of, I think it's, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, the, the what we call uh, judicial tr uh, transformation, transformation from the margins, mm -hmm. where you basically know that uh, uh, there are problems, you know, uh, you, you, you know, there's opposition to what you have, you, 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 you know, you're supposed to do, but you still find spaces to do something. And uh, one other thing I remember, which I, I might say I'm a pr proud of, the first uh, reform uh, undertook in the judiciary was to give tea to everybody because tea used to be drunk by... Uh, <laughs> I, was actually, I was actually going to ask you, like, literal tea or, you know, tea? <laughs> no, 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 not, not the bride. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we started... Uh, you know, uh, uh, family teas in courts. When they are at 11, mm -hmm. uh, you would meet and have tea and uh, some bitings mm. and, and, and just interact. Uh, before before that, when I got there, I remember going to the office of one of the uh, lady judges and I saw that she had three flasks of uh, tea. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering how one person can drink three, so much three tea. Flasks. Uh, <laughs> And I, I realized, of course, the secretaries uh, drank it, the drivers drank it, and, and then we, we, we had the budget, so mm. we said everybody should get uh, tea. So there was little, little things that we, uh, we, we, we were able mm. to do, particularly when the Kibaki government, the Kibaki and the Raila government uh, basically said, okay, you, you can build courts all over the place. Yeah. And the World Bank came in and, uh, you know, gave us uh, more money. Yeah. So it's, it, it, w w what I'm saying is uh, public, o public service is very frustrating, uh, particularly when your vision is not supported by the, uh, the political leadership. Mm. Uh, but there's always something, you know, you can do. Mm. Uh, the Constitutional Court of South Africa was very, very lucky when it was formed, because uh, the political leadership of uh, Madiba, all right, yep. supported them completely. So when you were supported like that, and uh, you know where the country is, is, is going, yeah. um, you know, all of you are pushing in the, in the national interest, it helps. Mm. 
And uh, we had uh, discussions uh, at the Judiciary Training Institute with, with uh, I remember we had uh, great discussions with the security people about uh, 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 terrorism, yeah. okay, because mm-hmm. they had concerns. So you, you, we would meet and uh, basically say, this is the Constitution, this is what is up, happening, and uh, we would... We, 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 we would get their views because because if the judiciary is detached from uh, what's happening in the country, all right, uh, aloof and bewildered, uh, it can also be a problem, particularly when you're talking about uh, national interests as well. So um, it's it's uh, the, the implementation of the constitution, of course, will take time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there are certain narratives that the citizens have got to be involved in. Yeah. I, I don't see why the citizens uh, uh, in Siaya, Makwemi, Nehru, and other places where the courts are, have not been built yeah. mm-hmm. uh, can't actually go to the MPs and say, why did you uh, stop this money coming to build this court? Yeah. Why, why didn't you give it to the, to the, to the judiciary? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, our people are just <laughs> divided. The, the barons are geniuses in dividing. So. Completely. We will never see eye to eye. We're talking about tribe no. or now it's mm. uh, political affiliations, who you're affiliated uh, to. Yeah, yes, but, but there's a great opportunity that I see in uh, people thinking alternatives, particularly yeah. the virus, this uh, uh, pandemic. Mm. What what you hear from ordinary people uh, is very very important. Yeah. Uh, we can't wash our hands because we don't have water and we can't afford soap. Yeah. Uh, you cannot uh, have a total lockdown because we have to 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 go out and work. Yeah. And uh, the universal health care is now uh, an issue of not just the working class but the middle classes uh, like ourselves. Yep. And uh, even the middle classes, you guys and me, I'm sure at the end of the month you get very angry because you have to start sending money by impressa to, you know, cousins, relatives. And yeah. We are subsidizing the state. The state has the resources. It has to stop stealing the resources and it has to... Uh, Do what good, what's good resources. for the public. Yeah, what yeah. is good for the public? What is the use of, of, of having a national debt that equals the amount that has been stolen by our elite since the independence? <laughs> good it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a arithmetic. They will have to pay off those debts, not, yeah. not, not, not the uh, people. But there is not too late for uh, for uh, the, the political leadership to to, to, to realize that uh, it, it, we cannot elect them and then they take orders from cartels, uh, foreign interests, uh, what is called illicit economy. Yeah. You know, you have to love your people. I can't, I couldn't imagine how in the midst of pandemic you go and uh, 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 demolish uh, people's homes. Uh, yeah, in the uh, Ruai and uh, this other place, Kariobangi. Kariobangi, yeah. And then the police beating up people, uh, you know, the killings and so forth. So, so, so I feel very, very, very strongly that the political leadership doesn't love it, the, the people it rules. It's, how, not behold, it's not beholden to the people, actually. We were, spoken, we were speaking with somebody yesterday and he said, to whom are they beholden? Mm. If it's not the people, mm-hmm. then they are not going to serve the people. They are going to serve their, their own, own interests and their interests. Yeah, but they 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 they, they, will, they will have to change because you see a lot of the system historically that survive. Yeah. All right. Survive because they give concessions. True. You 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 start doing stuff like this pandemic. It was a great opportunity for the government, for in my view, to. Uh, give water to the slum areas, yeah. watering places. Yes. After all, that uh, water is just managed by cartels in Nairobi water. I've been a victim of it myself, so I know how, how they do it. Yeah. Mm. So, so it's a question of saying, open up those taps. Mm-hmm. 
for two months or so, all right? Yeah. It, it's 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 uh, it's you, you know deal with the question of uh, uh, the, the giving people food if there's going to be a lockdown. Mm. Uh, don't let uh, people you know the charity you know you know the churches and other people start doing that. The state is the one that has more resources. So so you 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 show the people that you care and they and and, and they remember. Look at the millionaires. I think it's only one who. Uh, contributed something is yep. it the uh, mwangi yeah only dr mwangi yeah they yeah they could have raised you know billions with all their foundations mm. or the safaricom foundations breweries and whatnot mm. Uh, at least show they, they, they care about people. <laughs> actually, actually, uh, uh, Willie, there is, to, to, to be fair, there's also the other one, uh, Narendra Raval, mm -hmm. um, the yeah. one for Simba Cement. He also contributed. Yeah, uh, yeah, only, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you, 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 just, you just have to, you know, to, you have to, to you know, to, to, to give back because the system is, uh, is about property, power, and profit before people. But it comes a time when you basically uh, you want to stabilize the, the the nation and you make concessions that might be painful, all right? Uh, but you make them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you, you make them. That's the nature of politics. When you look at it historically, look at the history mm -hmm. of uh, Europe after 1945. Mm -hmm. They they became socialists overnight and went into what is called welfare capitalism. Mm. If mm. you didn't have jobs, you know, you 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 got uh, you got a stipend uh, from the government, yes. And that's when the UK and Europe uh, came up with universal health care. Yes. You know, UK abandoned it during uh, Thatcher. But the continental Europe, the particularly the Scandinavian countries, mm. if you go to Holland and these other places, their universal health care is strong. And that's a, the situation also in China. Yeah. You know, where the state uh, basically takes certain, uh, uh, treats certain uh, uh, public goods uh, as public goods. Yeah. Education, health, you know, the right to work, transport, yeah. prices yeah. of food, you control them. Mm. And uh, you tax the rich. Yeah. Because because the rich the rich in, in in this country do you think they pay taxes? Well, of course they don't. Yeah. Doctor William Mutunga, we have to let you go. We understand that you were getting into a meeting. Thank you very much for yeah. speaking to us, Doctor William Mutunga. You remember him? Is there was a Chief Justice between 2011 and 2016. Um, and now, like he's telling us, he's a retired man who works from home, reading, writing thinking and we are seeing a lot of uh, what uh, he's been doing at home coming out in public domain asante sana for speaking to us and keep listening thank to spice fm much. thank you so much yeah yeah and make your spice pili pili Come i best. think you are moving in that direction asante <laughs> asante sana. Sana. thank you thank you and have a good day yeah have a good day too thanks. all right it's a situation room it's kenya's biggest conversation